Okay, let, let me share with you a, a journey that I've been on and my own development in how leaders get developed. And uh, it started really when I was running the General Electric's uh, Leadership Institute, Crotonville, in the late 80s for Jack Welch. And I saw him there every two weeks teaching. And we would engage people in real projects around the world. And I, I realized that great leaders need to be great teachers. And I learned a lot from Welch at that point. And, and then when I went back to the University of Michigan, I started work on a leadership book called The Leadership Engine. And I met Roger Enrico, the CEO of PepsiCo. And I helped him put together a program where he would take 10 vice presidents at a time for five day offsite, no consultants, no professors. Roger taught everything, strategy, uh, you know, leadership, building a vision for your business. And one of the things that Roger said as he was preparing that program, a point of view is worth 100 IQ points. I, like stuck in my head. Yeah, you're right. People have a very clear point of view can make things happen in the world. And then as I watched Roger run this program, and he ran, while he was chairman, he ran two a year, five-day off-site with these 10 vice presidents, send them back for 60 days with a real growth project for their business, three-day follow-up. I realized it was a teachable point of view. It wasn't enough to have a point of view. You had to be able to teach it, and he was very good at teaching it. So in the Leadership Engine book, the concept of leaders as teachers got clear to me, and they had to have a teachable point of view. And, and let me just briefly say what a teachable point of view is, and I'll use a kind of simple example. If I were a tennis coach, and you paid me a lot of money for a five-day tennis camp, and I've got 20 people on the tennis court, I damn well better have a teachable point of view on tennis or why you pay me all this money. And the, the concept's simple. You've got a set of ideas in the tennis. I've got to teach you the backhand, the forehand, the serve, the rules. It's an intellectual understanding of the game. If I'm a good coach, I've got a set of values. How I want you to behave. I want you to dress a certain way, show up on time, have a good attitude, good sportsmanship. The values support the ideas. But if that's all I have, and I got 20 people, you spent a lot of money, I want you to work eight hours a day hitting 500 backhands, 500 serves, running around, how am I going to motivate you? So I have to have a teachable point of view on emotional energy. I'm not going to get there and sh here's a PowerPoint presentation on my ideas. Here's a power presentation on values. Now go run around for eight hours. I gotta have a teachable point of view on what I call emotional energy. How am I gonna motivate you to buy into the ideas, to buy into the values? One end of the spectrum, I can threaten you with whips and chains. The other is you come to my tennis and I'll hand you hundred dollar bills to make you motivated. Or it might be the opportunity to learn something new, to grow, to develop self-esteem, camaraderie, sense of accomplishment. What is my teachable point of view on how I motivate you? And the last element of a teachable point of view is edge or making clear judgments. Yes, no decisions. The ball is in, the ball is out. I don't hire consultants and set up committees. Yes or no. You're on the team or off the team. Yes or no. And edge or judgment comes after you have good ideas, after you have good values, after you're clear on how you motivate people, because without that foundation, you end up being a hip shooter. Now, I realized after I worked on a second book called The Cycle of Leadership, that there's some people who had teachable point of views, and they were autocratic, terrible leaders. They didn't really develop others. And so I all of a sudden said, hey, good leaders actually create what I call a virtuous teaching cycle. They don't just have a megaphone one way. They teach, but they learn from the people they teach. Roger Enrico did that at PepsiCo. Ten vice presidents working on real change projects, new products, new strategies. He came out smarter at the end of five days because he listened, helped, learned from them. And so I developed this notion of a virtuous teaching cycle. You know, teach, learn, teach, learn. And then I started another book with Warren Bennis called Judgment on how leaders make the big decisions. 
And we ended up not using the word decisions, we used judgment. Because at the end of the day, what all my colleagues write about in the business schools, all the consultants who have all these little formulas that end up in the Harvard Business Review, and you go talk to a real leader, and they'll say, that isn't how it happens. You talk to A.G. Laffley when he bought Gillette. Well, he didn't follow the five easy strategic steps in the last issue of the Harvard Business Review. He said, at the end of the day, I had to make a leap of faith. I had to make a judgment. And if I thought back to the years I'd worked with Jack Welch, who made 50, 60 acquisitions a year, at the end of the day, there is judgment in three areas. People, who's on the team, off the team. Strategy, what mountain do we climb? What businesses do we buy? And crisis, every so often things break. The only way you can make good judgments, in my view, is to have a solid foundation, teachable point of view. I have to have a set of ideas about product, services, distribution channels, customer segments the business is going into. I have to have a set of values on what it means to be a member of Procter & Gamble or General Electric, what are our core values. And if I'm GE, I got 300,000 people I have to emotionally energize, or Procter & Gamble, 130,000. And at the end of the day, as a leader, you've got to make judgments on people, strategy, crisis. And the foundation is a solid teachable point of view.